What's up guys? Welcome back to another Diesel Dog Garage video. Got a uh, Equinox here in the garage. This is actually my mother-in-law's vehicle. Basically we got a PO420 catalyst efficiency code in this thing. Uh, and the dealer wanted a whole buttload of money to fix it for her. And I said, well, lucky for you, you've got a son-in-law who does this for a living. So I'd take a lander at it and got some uh, exhaust parts for this thing I'm going to throw on today. Uh, hopefully it doesn't give us too much fits. I know a lot of you that actually work on, in a shop or on vehicles here, exhaust worker, are probably thinking, oh my God, I hope the studs don't break for you. And I hope that too, but uh, I'm going to probably get some PB blaster on there right away. Let it soak while we go over some of this stuff and then, uh, see if this thing doesn't swap in and out pretty easy for us today. So here's what we got here. I got a converter assembly. This is actually off of uh, rock auto. Um, I got the more expensive option on there, the OE design. Um, I didn't go with the cheap one. If you go to the cheap one, you're going to be doing it in a year. Hopefully this won't last enough time for her to drive it for a while yet until uh, she tries to get rid of it. But doing the bo both the oxygen sensors on there, I always recommend doing oxygen sensors uh, when you do the catalytic converters. A lot of you will agree. And then our two gaskets. I don't have new nuts for this thing. I should have ordered them, but hopefully we can reuse the nuts We'll see uh, if I'm running up somewhere to grab some nuts for this thing. And the fact that these bolt from the top kind of has me nervous, but, uh, you know, it is what it is. We'll, we'll figure it out. So just uh, checking on this thing a little bit before I dig in here. It looks like we got an oxygen sensor up top here. Um, and just to let you guys know, this is the first time I'm ever doing one on an Equinox like this. So I'm learning just as you are watching this, but looks like we've got an oxygen sensor back here. I'm going to have to get unclipped. Uh, there's a heat shield over top of the manifold and I can see kind of where those studs go up through the manifold. So probably going to have to get those nuts from up top. Doesn't look like we've got a lot of space, but I'm going to have to get this oxygen sensor off. Probably the heat shield off there um, and then have to go from there. Well, just looking underneath, going to have a uh, mounting bolt there. Going to have to get loose. Our studs to manifold are up there that you can get a better look at that heat shield that's going to have to come off. It's going to run down here and uh, got some mounting studs. So really it doesn't even matter if they break off because the new unit's got new studs on it anyways. It'd just be a matter of uh, getting some new nuts. So I'm going to get some PB blaster on all these and see if uh, they don't come loose for us. To make things easier to get back there, I'm going to go ahead and take this uh, air box off here and probably the engine cover, see if that opens anything up for us. Basically, you just got to clamp down there, use an 8 millimeter socket on, probably just pull it loose here instead of pulling this whole box off. Take that snorkel off and then uh, you'll have your uh, positive crankcase ventilation tube. So it looks like that helped us a lot there. You can really get down there and see what we got going on. Um, I'm gonna take this bracket off. It looks like it's two bolts on either side there. You're gonna need a 13 millimeter socket. Then we can easily access the heat shields and probably get this uh, O2 sensor off there. And two. Get this unplugged here. Here we go. All right. It's looking like the uh, manifold heat shield here is held on by three bolts. We're gonna need a 10 millimeter socket for it looks like. And what are the chances that these all come out? I don't know, chances are probably not good, but let's find out. First one, it's moving. Got that one started. Let's see this one. Oh, ooh, that one's good. One more. Oh wait, shield's loose, but looks like we're gonna have to take the uh, 
O2 sensor out of there and get it out. O2 sensors are usually at seven eighths. You can use a 22 mil special O2 sensor socket. Always helps, but you can use a wrench and get by. Come on. All right, here we go. And these are usually uh, elbow busters, so I'm always real nervous when I'm getting ready to break these things loose. There we go. Please don't hurt me. Come on. Oh. Oh. Turn. Work her a couple times here, probably. Come on, come to pop. Let's go. All right. Here we go. Got some crusties on there, but uh, original O2 sensors. So, chum chum on, chum chum on. Yeah, here we go. Oh yeah. Oh. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Number three. I can't believe those actually came loose like that. Get our mounting bolt out of here. Looks like the nut's just welded up on the back side, so easy enough. Oh yeah. Okay. Got our hanger rubber here. Usually I can get these things with uh, my nitpicks here. There we go, come on. Like that. And we got our last couple nuts here for the back. Hopefully these come loose like the everything else. Don't have a torch here, but I do have a heat gun. That gets pretty hot, so uh turning that out. Oh come to pop, come on. Come on now. Mm. Looks like our downstream O2 sensor comes out the side here. Got a connector, gotta get off there. And I think we might have another obstacle here with this cross bracket uh, from side to side. Might have to take that off to drop this thing out of there, but it's not a big deal. Well, guys, looks like the uh, converter is actually hitting this bracket here. So one more obstacle, but I got to take that. You can see the nut up there. I'm going to take that bracket off and then hopefully it slides right out. so satisfying well let's see what we're uh doing here um mm -hmm. yep mm -hmm. i mean it's a converter sometimes you run into issues with these aftermarket units where uh from one side to the other isn't lining up as perfectly as the oe part that comes off Hopefully we don't have an issue, but uh, other than that, it looks pretty good. Taking a look down in the converter, doesn't look too bad. Doesn't look like it's coming apart or clogging or anything. I just 
think we have a, uh, I think we just have a classic case of the catalyst, just uh, not performing like it should, not taking out all the bad stuff as it should. So get this new unit started up in here. Match up your O2 sensor connectors. Obviously you want to get them in the correct positions. Don't think that they're both the same. They're gonna be different typically. Torque to spec always. Click, okay. New gaskets, obviously, always front and rear. See how this one does. Just going to stick. This front one's just going to stick right in there like that. Rear gasket's going to slide on like that. So at this point, I'm going to kind of fast track this and just get this thing slapped back in there. Pretty easy. Easy enough. Just reverse your uh, removal procedure, obviously. And don't forget that. Well guys, that's a wrap on the old uh, Equinox here. It wasn't too bad of a job actually, except for the two rear nuts uh, were on there pretty good, but that heat gun actually just getting a little heat on there and then my uh, bigger breaker bar busted them loose. I'm surprised the nuts actually came off and didn't bust the uh, studs off, but uh, honestly a lot smoother than I expected. Usually exhaust jobs don't go that smooth, so that's good. Good for a Saturday job. If I can give one piece of advice uh, on like catalytic converter systems, R&R &R &R, or uh, anything really on exhaust is to start from the front and work your way back. Make sure you bolt up at the manifold first. Make sure that is bolted up good and tight and flush and then work your way back uh, with your brackets. Leave everything kind of loose till you get that manifold bolted up. Make sure you're not tweaking anything. Make sure that bolts up nice and good. Uh, so that's what I do and uh, got, it all, got it all done. Next thing to do would be to clear the uh, code out of the computer and basically drive it and uh, see what it does. So, but pretty sure it's gonna be fixed. So guys, that's gonna do it for me. Just a nice little uh, Saturday job, easy job. And uh, if you like this video, hit the thumbs up, subscribe, comment below, and I'll see you guys in the next video.